This video contains spoilers, so if you haven't watched the episode yet, uh, go ahead and watch it now. So, Murder Dross episode 7 is a great episode. No, it's a masterpiece. It's a piece of art. Like, what do we have here? Great animation? Check. Great music? Check. Sekka's like hell fight scenes? Check. Shipping? Uh, yeah, okay, I'm not a fan of that, but it doesn't ruin the episode like another episode news the shippers absolutely love, so check I guess. It just flows perfectly and smoothly, making this episode the closest to perfection so far. And I know it's pretty weird that I am saying that, even though I really made a short where I roast this episode. And to be honest, I really regret making that short because damn, this episode's so good. But there's a big problem that I have with this episode, especially for the first watch, but I'm gonna talk about it later. Let's at least give the episode the appreciation it deserves. Well, this episode is the climax of the whole show, and since the previous episodes were just starting plots and arcs without actually finishing them, we finally get to see them fully concluded, mostly. And, you know... It's a pretty difficult task to handle all of this in a 25 minutes episode. And them being able to do this flawlessly is pretty dang impressive to be honest. Like, every single event is reasonable, not forced, given the sheer amount of events in this episode. Every character is acting according to their personality, there are no characters broken here. Uzi is her same angsty but worried and caring self. In is the lovable goofball as always, even though we clearly see the impact of the situation he is currently in. Like, you got it, in and in. Okay, I will stop, sorry. And Doll is well, Doll, she still has the illusion of control, without realizing that she is actually a part of someone else's game all this time. Nori and Yeva were actually pretty chill, for some reason I thought they were evil. Probably only Nori because of the way she was presented, but actually she is pretty chill. Tessa, yeah, okay, can we discuss how messed up this is? Like, the fact that Sin probably killed her in the gala as a kid and took her body and controlled it, just pure evil and messed up. And speaking of Sin, damn, what a great villain for the show. She really feels threatening more than anything else we have seen. Like, she is everywhere, like, everywhere. Uzi, she is there. V, she is there. Tessa, like the human, she is there too. Like no matter what you do, you cannot escape her. The fact that she has control over Uzi, she is still trying to kill her. She really doesn't care about her host. I know Sin and Absolute Solver are completely different entities, but I like to refer to them as one entity because it's easier I guess, I don't know. And apparently, this is how you do a cliffhanger, not this. The animation is clean as heck even though I hated it when I first watched it, probably because it is bouncier, but I don't know, I really love it now. There are some parts that were pretty weird, like this part that had motion blur enabled, and the fight scene that probably has 60 fps instead of 30 like the other episode has I think. Still, it was pretty damn impressive, even though I'm still wondering why they didn't do the whole episode as 60 frames per second. I don't know. And the artistic choices here are pure art. It clearly stems from people who know what they are doing. The way they presented the solver as a position and the human trying to exorcise it in this cathedral looking thing. The way Eva's screen is vibing to the music. Well, actually it's a Tetris, never mind. The scene where Solver Uzi just stares before horribly breaking her neck while smiling and the music is slowing down in the background. And also the reflection of Uzi and in on Tessa's helmet before revealing that she is actually alive. Or well, there's a monster inside that she was alive. And the deafening silence of space in the last scene, they all just have so much soul in them. And I don't really need to talk about the camera movements here, they are just peak. The amount of twists and turns are just impressive. And the slow motions. Oh, the slow motions. The horror and action are insanely good. I'm pretty sure this is the most action and horror packed episode we have got so far. The horror is top notch, it's scary, intriguing, and knows when to hit and impact them most. Like how terrifying and well crafted scenes like this scene for example where Doll of all people 
being easily defeated and just eaten by this monster. The sound design, the darkness, just peak. The way in also beheaded Tessa and then the monster inside her was free. And I cannot forget about this scene where the murder drones are killing and eating real humans. I mean, I will not be able to look at these creatures the same way I used to before. Like, we clearly see what the show is capable of in terms of horror, so... Why didn't you do something like this in episode like episode 5 for example? Like, there's this whole gala massacre thing or whatever and they just ruin it with a stupid joke. Like, you should have done something like this at least, it would have been way better. The action in episode 7 is pretty dang impressive. The main fight scene with the epic music playing in the background is really fire. And speaking of music, it's what you would expect from murder drones, but probably even better actually. And the humor, well, it's kind of not really there actually, probably like episode 6, but even the tiny jokes are pretty good and doesn't ruin the episode like this episode did. Yes, I'm pointing at episode 5. <laughs> I will not mention it again, sorry. It really makes me want to keep talking about how good this episode actually is, but that's until we run into a single problem. It can absolutely ruin the first watch of anyone like it did for me, and it's the primary reason I made that short. Let's talk about the pacing. Going back to the pilot of Murder Drones, you will clearly see how simple the plot was. It was just a bunch of robots living their lives until the company on earth decided to kill them for some reason and that's the whole plot which is very simple compared to what we have now. And ironically, people were still complaining about the show being fast paced. That's until episode 4 was released and that's probably the slowest episode so far. Episode 6 released and it was probably the most fast paced episode we got so far before episode 7 and people were obviously complaining about this because well this is the pre-climax episode which yeah it probably would be packed with a lot of events but that episode was so fast paced that it was dizzying so if the pre-climax was this dizzyingly fast paced then the climax itself is end my suffering yes episode 7 Literally, the amount of information intake is insane. We have two major fight scenes, three characters dying, two plot twists, a completely new backstory, and two cliffhangers like, help me, my brain is crying mid-watch. And that's why I hated it when I first watched it. There were a lot of events and cool scenes happening, and I don't get enough time to appreciate them because I'm just trying to process whatever was happening in this episode. And apparently, if you blink or look away for a second, you're probably gonna miss a lot of events. Like, this sick as hell fight scene was happening, and it's cool, so badass, and it's fun, and I can't get enough of watching it, but my brain in the first watch was like, And to be honest, I don't really blame the episode for this, it's not its fault, there is so much story being told here that does not fit an 8 episode show. But I know, this is an indie project made with limited budget and I am not really saying that they should make more episodes or they need to make the episode longer or anything, because I know, indie project, indie studio, they cannot do that easily. But like, you didn't really need to waste an episode like episode 4 I guess. Like, it only added some character development, aka shipping, and Uzi now have wings, and there's this, I don't know, zombie drones VHS tape. That's it, Cabin Fever's whole mention was like for a brief second, and that's it, the whole episode is named Cabin Fever without anything to do with Cabin Fever, like what? They could have added the Cabin Fever backstory there, it would leave some more room for breathing in this episode. I mean, not only episode 4 was probably wasted, I think that most of the previous episodes were just chilling, they were just adding some tiny plot points and dots to connect throughout the show. I know it's a pretty cool way of keeping the fandom engaged with the show, but it just makes the last 3 episodes completely stuffed with events and plots and I don't know, whatever was happening. 
But this is the only I'm gonna say about this issue and since I am talking about the issues of this episode, let's talk about something else. What happened in this subplot? We finally see Khan acknowledging Oz's work. He even trusted it and made a full railgun from her blueprints. Such a potential for something like a redemption arc or something. And we also see some more J screen time, finally. But you know, the ending just looks at this subplot and is like, what's this subplot? Never heard of it. And completely destroys the whole planet without actually knowing what's happening here. Like, I've been waiting for J screen time. Please. <clears throat> and the last thing I have here, which is not really an issue, but it's just, I really miss the old vibe of murder drones, to be honest. Like the wackiness and goofiness of the characters, the vibe, the simple structure, the atmosphere, the simple story and plot. I just really miss it so much. It's not that complexity is bad or anything, I actually really enjoy it. Like modern murder drones is just way better than old murder drones. Much better animation, much better storytelling, much better humor and stuff, you know, it's much better, but I just miss that vibe for some reason. It's mostly just nostalgia, so yeah, I don't know if anyone even agrees with me. But yeah, that was the video, I guess. There are a lot of things that I really wanted to say about this episode. Like, it's really damn good. But I might take more than an hour to cover them all, so yeah, I'm just gonna stick with this. So thanks for watching, I guess, and see you in the next video. And don't forget to subscribe and do that YouTube things. I don't know, bye.